Chapter one, abbreviation symbols and basic mathematical skills for health occupations. Pharmacology is the study of the uses, mechanisms of action, and effects of medications <clears throat> on body systems. Chemicals used as medications or drugs are the basis of pharmacology. Medications used to treat conditions and diseases must be dosed, prepared, and administered correctly. Calculating doses correctly is essential for the safety of patients. Different medicinal preparations contain different amounts of active ingredients. Preparation also contain a variety of excipients, which are medicinally inactive substances added to the formulation as fillers, binders, coloring agents, flavoring, and preservatives. Each drug has its own specific concentration of active ingredient in a formulation. For example, a tablet may be manufactured in 10 and 20 milligram strengths, and a liquid may be manufactured in 125 milligrams per 5 ml and 250 milligrams for 5 ml strength. The safe and effective amount of medication has been tested and recognized as within acceptable limits by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services Food and Drug Administration. The U.S. Pharmacopeia and the National Formulary are manuals that provide standards for medication ingredients, preparation, and storage which are enforced by the FDA. Each medication has its own recommended dose and dosage range. The pharmacy technician must have a thorough understanding of both the mathematical skills and the terminology used in medicine in order to assist the pharmacist in providing excellent patient care. Knowledge of medical terminology and abbreviations is necessary for properly interpreting and dispensing prescription and medication orders as well as educating patients and taking medications at home. Abbreviations are used to refer to routes of administration, frequency of dosing, and units of measurement within systems, among others. Some abbreviations have been used for years that have been found to lead to medication errors, which led to the development of the Joint Commission official do not use list of abbrevi abbreviations. To comply with this list, none of the include abbreviations have been used in this text. So we have this list here. Just keep in mind that a lot of doctors still do this stuff. So um, just some examples. Um, unit, we shouldn't use U because it can be mistaken for the number zero with the number four or CC. Um, so we want to always write out the word unit. Um, they say that you should not use QD and you should do write daily. And then same with every other day, write every other day instead of using the SIG code for it. However, you're going to see many prescriptions that just say have QD and QOD in them. In pharmacy, we never... Um, put a decimal without a zero in front of it. So we don't do um, trailing zeros. We don't want to miss decimal points and lack leading zeros. So by putting that zero before the decimal. <clears throat> in addition, the Institute for Safe Medication Practices, the ISMP, has compiled the list of error-prone abbreviation symbols and dose designations. So this is a much longer list. So you can kind of go through it and say the different um, intended meetings, misinterpretations, and corrections. The following is a list of some common abbreviations and symbols that you should know. Although some of the following are included in one or both of the previous lists, you should still be aware of them and their preferred substitutes, which are bolded in the following list. Some may still be included on the PTCE, the National Pharmacy Technician Certification Examination. <clears throat> so for routes of administration, we have ID for intradermal, IM for intramuscular, IT for intrathecal, IV for intravenous, PO by mouth, PR rectal, PV vaginal, SC, SQ, and subQ, subcutaneous, and you should use subcut. 
SL sublingual, TOP topical. For frequency of administration, we have QH for every hour, Q2H for every two hours, Q4H for every four, Q6H for every six, Q8H for every eight, and Q12H for every 12 hours. QD for once a day, you should use daily. BID for twice a day, TID for three times a day, QID for four times a day, QOD every other day, Q week every week, Q month every month. Times of administration, so we have AC before meals, PC after meals, AM morning, PM evening, NAC night, HS hour of sleep, use bedtime, PRN as needed, ASAP as soon as possible, STAT at once immediately. For dosage form solids, we have CAP for capsule, TAB for tablet. For liquids, we have FL and F for fluid and LIQ for liquid, SUSP for suspension and SYR for syrup. For semi-solids, we have CR for cream, LOT for lotion, SUPP for suppository, UNG and OINT for ointment. For measurement systems, we have MCG for microgram, MG for milligram, G for gram, KG for kilogram, ML, capital L for milliliter, L, capital L for liter, M for meter. And then for household system, we have GTT for drops, TSP for T for teaspoons, the smaller T, tablespoon, and uh, T for tablespoon, the uppercase T, C and C for cup, OZ for ounce, PT for pint, QT for quart, BAL for gallon, the pound symbol or LB for pound, the inches symbol or IN for inch, the foot symbol, and FT for foot. And then we have the apothecary system, the different recommendations. You should use a metric system. For miscellaneous medication measurements, we have MEQ for milliequivalent and IU and U for international unit and units. For ear and eyes, we have AD, right ear. We have AS, left ear, AU, each ear. OD, right eye, OS, left eye, OU, each eye. For general abbreviations, we have A with a line over top of it for before, P with a line over top of it for after, C with a line over top of it for with, S for a line over top of it for without, the equal sign for equal to, the equal with a slash not equal to. We have our less than and greater than symbols, the higher than increase and lower than decrease symbols. AA with a line over top of it means of each. Ad lib means as desired. DAW means dispenses written. NKA, no known allergies. NKDA, no known drug allergies. Non-rep, do not repeat. NPO, nothing by mouth. OTC, over the counter. QS, quantity sufficient or sufficient quantity. Rep, repeat. RX, prescription, treatment, take this drug. Capital T, capital O, telephone order. UD, as directed. VO, capital V, capital O, verbal order. Pharmacy technicians are involved in the calculations of the amount of medication necessary to provide correct doses. They must also ensure that there are a sufficient number of doses for the desired length of therapy prescribed by the physicians. Mathematics is used daily in the preparation of medications in both retail and institutional pharmacies. 
The responsibility that accompanies the preparation of medications is one that must be taken seriously so that effective drug levels are reached and dangerous drug levels are not reached. They must be familiar with ex acceptable limits, both minimums and maximums of medications. They are responsible for the medications they prepare, although a pharmacist is required to double check everything before it leaves the pharmacy. Technicians are responsible for their actions, which are heavily dependent on mathematical skills. The course of pharmacology covers the skills required to master acceptable doses and the expected results of the medication. This text deals with the mathematical skills necessary for the safe preparation of the amount of medication prescribed for the patient. The basic fundamental math skills necessary for pharmaceutical calculations include manipulation of fractions, decimals, and whole numbers to calculate the correct amount of medication needed. These skills are used for dose and dosage calculations in three measurement systems, household measurements such as teaspoons and tablespoons, which are used in the United States, metric system measurements such as grams, liters, and meters, which are commonly used throughout the rest of the world, and apothecary system measurements such as grains, drams, and ounces, which were the basis of pharmacology but have now been mostly replaced by metric measurements. It is essential to understand these systems of measurement and be able to convert between them to prepare prescriptions for administration. Additional mathematical conversions are also necessary, such as the conversion between 12 and 24 hour military time, because military time is used in inpatient settings for medication administration. The standard 12 hour time with AM and PM designations is used in most outpatient settings, so the ability to give the correct time in either situation is necessary. Conversions between Fahrenheit and Celsius temperatures and the use of Arabic and Roman numerals are also important in pharmacy. Basic math skills are necessary for safe and accurate dosage calculations. Understanding whole numbers, fractions, decimals, and percentages is crucial to pharmaceutical calculations. This knowledge is put to use in solving addition, subtraction, and multiplication and division problems on a basic algebra level. Many of the calculations will involve properly setting up and solving ratio and proportion equations. So that's literally going to be what we do for math as a pharmacy technician like 85% of the time. Knowing your multiplication tables without the use of a calculator is necessary for keeping up with the pace of work in a pharmacy. So yes, um, although a calculator is available, knowing your multiplication tables is going to just make things a little bit easier for you. So if you're not, you know, that good at them or it's been a while and you're not necessarily feeling the greatest about them, just buy a simple flashcards of, you know, the normal times tables or make your own. Um, it will be good to refresh your brain with them for sure. A calculator is available. Most pharmacists will expect you to do the simple calculations without one. I'll have to disagree with that. I feel like most pharmacists would prefer you use a calculator than to do it by hand and get the wrong information. Practicing math skills without a calculator will increase your analytical math skills that enable you to solve equations and take components of a whole to form relationship among its parts. Analysis of pharmacological problems is an important step in ensuring accurate calculations with each medication order. Always ask yourself if your answer makes sense and then check it. The following is an assessment to help determine your strengths and weaknesses. It is also an indicator of your readiness to proceed through the text. Chapter 2 focuses on basic math skills that you need, may need to review depending on your comfort level with the assessment. Proficiency in math skills is extremely important. So when there is a basic math skills proficiency test. If you want to do it, it is great uh, to kind of brush up your skills before doing chapter two. If you want the answers afterwards, just let me know and I can get them to you. It is not a required assignment. Pharmaceutical calculations incorporate basic algebra skills that are easy to learn as long as one has a good understanding of basic math skills. Continue working on these basic skills in Chapter 2 if needed. Spending the time necessary to become comfortable with the basic skills and information in the first two chapters of this text will make 
progression through the following chapter is much easier. It's exciting to see how these skills lead to an interesting career as a pharmacy technician.